From heartbroken stars being left frustrated over a sudden recasting, to fellow big-name thespians wondering why certain names were chosen for highly specific roles. These actors did not hold back upon hearing about which talents were attached to star in certain upcoming productions. Gareth here from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 upcoming castings that pissed off actors. Number 10. Tom Budge is recast with great sadness. The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Kicking things off with the biggest small screen endeavor in TV history now, and with the news of a star once again being dumped out of Middle Earth before the finished product even made its way to hobbits and elves around the globe. Yet while one time Aragorn Stuart Townsend was at least relieved of his duties before ever actually stepping onto a set, Tom Budge actually got as far as to film a number of episodes for the upcoming The Lord of the Rings The Rings of Power Prime video series before being told to pack his bags. And though it wasn't specifically noted at the time of his departure who the Australian was playing, Budge's comments on Instagram after his exit of Amazon has decided to go in another direction with the character I was portraying suggest that the folks behind the camera opted to quietly bring someone else in for his undisclosed part. And his summing up of the whole scenario as a very difficult and unusual experience tells the story of an actor who was less than happy to be let go. Number 9. Chris Evans doesn't want to see CGI James Dean finding Jack He may be generally viewed as perhaps the nicest man alive, but if Captain America slash Buzz Lightyear himself Chris Evans is not a fan of something, you better believe he'll let you know about it. And sure enough, when stumbling upon the news of Magic City Films deciding to bring big screen icon James Dean back to life via CGI technology for their incoming Finding Jack Vietnam War drama back in 2019, Evans was justifiably livid. Taking to Twitter, the MCU superstar would blast the development out of the gates, stating that I'm sure he'd be thrilled this is awful. And while directors Anton Ernst and Tati Golick seem to be very much keen on the surreal idea early on, telling The Hollywood Reporter that the family views this as his fourth movie, a movie he never got to make. We do not intend to let his fans down. It speaks volumes that all talk of the highly controversial project has largely died down, with Finding Jack still not rearing its head in cinemas at time of recording. Number 8. Emma Furman was as sad as you all were about the change-up, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Emma Furman stepping into the shoes of an older Cassie Lang in the wake of her father's five-year stint in the Quantum Realm during Avengers Endgame seemed to be setting the actor up for bigger things in the MCU later down the road. Yet that surprisingly wouldn't turn out to be the case at all. On the back of the third Ant-Man flick being given its official title in December 2020, Furman soon found out that she wouldn't be brought back for the Quantum Mania ride, with Catherine Newton instead taking on the part of Scott's daughter for the next Ant feature. Instead of unleashing hell on Twitter shortly after hearing the soul-crushing news though, the Endgame actor simply tweeted out her thanks for fans supporting her at this time, before admitting to being as sad as you all were to hear the news. But the recast star still couldn't hide her understandable disappointment in being dropped from what could have potentially been a career-making role. Number 7. Julia Sawala is devastated and furious over her recasting. Chicken Run Dawn of the Nugget After what has felt like an age of clucking and pecking, fans were finally treated to the news of much-loved Aardman animation Chicken Run being gifted a long-awaited sequel that will eventually be let loose on Netflix in 2023. Sadly though, Netflix's plan to hatch a new adventure for Ginger and the Gang did actually come with a rather depressing revelation. Original leading chicken Julia Sawala would not be returning to the coop. As revealed by the actor herself around the time of the sequel's announcement, the reason they gave me is that my voice now sounds too old, and they want a younger actress to reprise the role. And on top of admitting to say I am devastated and furious would be an understatement, the unmistakable voice of the leading hen also expressed sadness at the fact she would not get the chance to work with Nick Park and Peter Lord from whom I learned so much. Thandu and Newton will no doubt do a stellar job as a recast ginger in Dawn of the Nugget, but that still doesn't change the fact that many still see Sawala's dropping from the picture as straight up ageism. Number 6. John Leguizamo calls out an all-white cast, Mario Big screen veteran John Leguizamo is not afraid to speak his mind on social media. The actor, of course, infamously appeared opposite Bob Hoskins in a rather poorly received attempt to give Nintendo's Mario the live-action movie treatment. So when news recently broke of Universal Pictures' intentions to dust off the iconic video game plumber for a new animated cinematic adventure, Leguizamo was initially thrilled. However, upon taking in precisely who would be taking up the feature roles, the star was soon left feeling a little let down by the all-white cast 
casting this time around. As the one-time Luigi would note on Twitter in response to stars such as Chris Pratt and Charlie Day being brought in for the picture, obviously it's iconic enough, but too bad they went all white. No Latinos in the leads? Groundbreaking colorblind casting in original. Leguizamo wasn't the only one feeling a touch frustrated in light of the casting news either, with many fans also pushing back against the likes of Pratt being attached to the property from the get-go. Number 5. Lady Gaga replacing Margot Robbie is an insult. Joker fully adieu. News of Lady Gaga joining up with Joaquin Phoenix and Todd Phillips for the upcoming Joker for Les et Deux musical follow-up to the highly successful 2018 first DC entry only added further intrigue to the surreal mix. However, one person who isn't said to be all that pleased about the reveal of Gaga reportedly taking on the role of Harley Quinn in this Joker follow-up is none other than fellow live-action Harleen Quinzel, Margot Robbie. According to a source close to the Suicide Squad and Birds of Prey star, it was revealed to OK Magazine that Margot is isn't angry about the choice. She is insulted. After already noting that Lady Gaga playing Harley Quinn in the Joker sequel instead of Margot Robbie is a joke. And though the undoubted MVP of the DCEU so far has yet to officially comment on Gaga's apparent taking up of the Quinn role in this separate DC universe, it seems as though this super town may not actually be big enough for two big name live action Harleys. Number 4. Charlize Theron not being brought back is a tough pill to swallow. Furiosa. Charlize Theron's mesmerizing Furiosa acted as one of the major highlights throughout George Miller's two-hour thrill ride that was Mad Max Fury Road. And that's perhaps what made the news of the Academy Award-winning talent not being brought back into the full for Miller's next slice of mad movie making so surprising, with Anya Taylor-Johnson instead being cast in the title role for the incoming Furiosa prequel. It wasn't just fans caught off guard by this call to leave Theron at home either, with the star herself going on record to note to The Hollywood Reporter how it's a tough one to swallow. Going further, the South African-American actress would also admit, Yeah, it's a little heartbreaking for sure. I really love that character and I'm so grateful that I had a small part in creating her. Number 3. Maureen Lippmann wants a Jewish star, not Helen Mirren. Golda Despite being quick to highlight how she feels that the legendary Helen Mirren is a fine actress and will be brilliant in the role, that still didn't stop the pianist star Maureen Lippmann from disagreeing with the decision to have the star step into the shoes of Israeli leader Golda Meir in an incoming biopic centered around the figure. Claiming that the Jewishness of the character is so integral, Lippmann was clearly not too happy about a Jewish actor not being brought in for the Golda part, stating that if the religion fires the character, then I honestly think you should look at that group that gender. Far from shying away from the controversy surrounding the call, Millen herself would also address her casting by telling the Daily Mail, I do believe it is a discussion that has to be had, it's utterly legitimate. You know, if someone who's not Jewish can't play Jewish, does someone who's Jewish play someone who's not Jewish? And with Mirren making many a headline for looking simply unrecognizable on the back of her prosthetic transformation for the role, it's safe to say more than a few eyes will be on the Oscar winner's work by the time Golda arrives on the scene later this year. Number 2. Peter Dinklage calls out Disney for its effing backwards remake, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. On the back of doing his utmost to break down barriers during his time in the spotlight, Game of Thrones star Peter Dinklage was left simply baffled at the announcement of Disney's latest live-action remake in the form of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. In his conversation on Mark Merron's WTF podcast, the Emmy and Golden Globe winner did not hold back in his blasting of the studio for telling that effing backwards story of the Seven Dwarves living in the cave. In the wake of it being reported that Disney could now steer clear of casting dwarves in the roles altogether, a number of dwarf actors actors would eventually take aim at the Tyrion Lannister actor for his criticism. Dylan Postel, formerly known as WWE's Hornswoggle in particular, would confess, It's not helping our community, it's taking jobs away from our community that are very few and far between as it is. And with Disney now going as far to retitle the project as simply Snow White, it's evident the House of Mouse is trying to steer clear of as much controversy as possible with their latest live-action fairy tale. Number 1. John Leguizamo isn't a fan of James Franco's casting, Alina of Cuba. That man again, John Leguizamo joined a number of thoroughly pissed off fans online in calling out the decision to cast James Franco as Cuban revolution leader Fidel Castro in the upcoming Alina of Cuba feature. Yet while many were quick to question the casting decision due to Franco's recent sexual misconduct accusations, Leguizamo was more concerned about the fact that a non-Latino actor was passed up on for the part. As the clearly aggravated actor would state on Instagram, how is Hollywood excluding us but stealing our narratives as well? No more appropriation Hollywood and streamers. Boycott. This effed up. 
That being said though, Franco has at least one supporter despite the justified controversy surrounding his casting, with Castro's own daughter still backing the leading man who, in her words, has an obvious physical resemblance with Fidel Castro. Yeah, we'll take her word for it, yeah? And that's our list. Know of any other upcoming castings that pissed off actors? Let us know all about them in the comment section right down below. And do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, be sure to head on over to whatculture.com and find some more incredible articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I have been Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you, as always, for clicking on this lovely video today. I hope to see you very soon, but in the meantime, be good to yourself. Bye-bye.